6.6 inequalities in two triangles. The hinge theorem states, if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, then the third side of the first is longer than the third side of the second. So this is similar to inequalities in triangles where you're just trying to compare the size of one side length compared to another. And think about a door opening and closing. I'll even use my hand to kind of demonstrate it. So this side length right here between my two fingers is kind of short while my fingers are closed. But as I open my finger and I increase the angle between my first finger and my thumb, the side length gets longer. And that's what the hinge theorem is trying to demonstrate, which is why it's called the hinge theorem. And that's why I said, think about a door. So what's happening is we're trying to compare this side length WX and compare it to side length ST. Obviously their side lengths, you can tell which one's larger and which one's smaller based on just looking at it with your eyeballs but you can prove it with their angle measures. So because angle V, because 88 is larger than 30, 35, then WX is open wider than ST. So WX is always gonna be longer than ST and it's just in size, it's just a size comparison, who's greater than or less than the other. You can also go the opposite direction. It's called the converse of the hinge theorem, which means that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the third side of the first is longer than the third side of the second, then the included angle, so we can determine things about angles this time, of the first is larger than the included angle of the second. So look at this diagram, it does not have any angles, angle measures on it, but it does have side lengths. So we're comparing AB compared to C and DE compared to F. So who is larger? Which angle measure is larger? Of course, with your eyeballs, you can see that C is larger than F, but we can prove it using their opposite side lengths. So because 12 is greater than nine, we can say that angle C is greater than angle F. So always, it's just comparing their size. So example one, given that ST is congruent to PR, ST is congruent to PR, how does PST compare to SPR? So PST, PST, so this one, which is opposite of 24, kind of that angle S area, and SPR, SPR, so this angle, and it's opposite of 23. So how do they compare? Who's greater than who? Well, I can see that 24 is greater than 23. So that means that PST, so angle PST, is greater than angle SPR. Pause this video and try example number two on your own. How does angle B compared to angle E? Well, I know that 11 corresponds to B and 10 corresponds to E. So because 11 is greater than 10, I can say that angle B is greater than angle E. All right, example number three. Another one, we're going the opposite direction this time. That's a 64 degrees and a 61 degrees. 64 is corresponding to JM, and I'll highlight that. And 61 corresponds to ML. So using your eyes on this one is a little bit tough because they look about the same length, but we're asking who's longer, JM or LM? Well, because 64 is greater than 61, that means that JM is greater than 
LM or ML, however, which direction you want to say that one. <clears throat> Example number four, <clears throat> pardon me, use the diagram. Which is longer, SQ or RQ? And they're saying that QPR, QPR is greater than QPS. So they're saying that this, I'm going to put a little dot there, that angle measure is larger than the other. <clears throat> so when we're comparing SQ to QR or RQ, that means that this, this side's going to be larger because it corresponds to the larger angle. So RQ is greater than SQ. All right, this time they're saying RQ is less than SQ. So they're saying that this one's the smaller side length. So which of the angle measures is larger? So again, RQ is the smaller. That means SQ is the longer. So this angle measure where I put the little dot is going to be bigger, which that one's going to be SPQ. So angle SPQ is going to be greater than angle RPQ. All right, last two are algebraics. Write and solve the inequality for the possible values of x. So we know we're going to be writing an inequality. Recall that inequalities mean greater thans and less thans. And so we're, our, it's not going to have an equal sign in it. It's going to have a greater than or less than. So remember, we're com comparing the size of two things. So we've got x plus 7 in this angle measure, 2x minus 3 in this angle measure, and opposite of them, I can see that this one is two, a length of two, and this one's a length of three. So which of these angle measures is larger than the other? I know 2x minus three is larger than x plus seven. It's tempting to want to include the three and the two into your inequality, but you don't need it. So we're just making a statement that because three is greater than two, just because I know that that's true, I can say that 2x minus three is greater than x plus 7. So you really only need to make an expression or an inequality in this case uh, between the ones that have the x values in them. You don't need to include the items that told you who's larger than who. So now you do solve it like an equation. So imagine this as an equation bar, and we're going to combine our x's, so minus x. So that's x minus 3 is greater than 7. Add 3. So x is greater than 10. So any number that's greater than 10, if you substitute it in here, will make angle measures that are true, meaning that this angle measure is larger than this angle measure. All right, you can go the other direction as well. So if they give you angle measures, you can compare the side lengths between the two. So 37 corresponds to x plus 14, and 84 corresponds to 2 times 3x minus 8. Just use your eyeballs for a second, and which of these lengths, which of these highlighted lengths is longer? Well, I can see that 2 times 3x minus 8 is longer than x plus 14. We can prove that using our angle measures. 84 is greater than 37, which means that 2 times 3x minus 8 is greater than x plus 14. And then we solve it just like a linear equation, but this time we need to distribute. So 2 times 3 is 6x. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. It's greater than x plus 14 minus x. 5x minus 16 is greater than 14. Add 16. 5x is greater than 30. Divide by 5, and x is greater than 6. Thank you.